Kevin here with another episode for you of the Real Estate Without Records podcast. Hey everybody, Kevin here with another episode for you of the Real Estate Without Records podcast. And yes, I know it's been a couple months since I've done one of these, but I've been putting out a lot of good free content for you guys almost on a daily basis. If you follow me on Facebook, X, uh, Instagram, and uh, YouTube, I post a lot of uh, content there for you as well. But I like to do the podcast when I have a good guest in mind, and I've got a great guest uh, for you here today. I took on an important topic because, you know, the topic on this podcast, of course, is always about notes and, and real estate. But the reality is behind all of these notes and real estate are people. And a big part of this business is networking, uh, building up a reputation, getting to know the proper buyers and sellers and expanding upon your business. Because essentially everybody at some point in time in this industry runs out of their own money to buy these notes. So that means you got to rely upon other people's money. And a great way to do that is setting through things up through, uh, through uh, meetup groups or local meetings, uh, anything that you can do like that. So I've invited uh, my old friend, Dave Frenicky, to, to come on here and, and spend some time with us. Dave, always great to see you. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing great. I was excited to see that you're, you're getting back into notes. I know you kind of deviated a little bit, and uh, now you're back. You see some... Uh, you see some things through the crystal ball, so to speak, uh, but also uh, notice that you're restarting your club. Uh, the meet, a meetup, I guess, is, is more proper out in um, Phoenix, which I came out and spoke to a couple times, you know, years ago. So good to see you doing that again. It's a note investors forum. It's going to be at the same restaurant, um, and it's going to be on the twenty first at uh, eleven thirty. That's a Wednesday, and we've already got thirty plus people signed up. Yeah. That's and, and it's, it's like, from my perspective, I've lived through a lot of pain with all these cycles. And there's another huge cycle coming up. And I feel there's opportunity. I feel I can help people. And I think a lot of people can collaborate. So I think it's a, it's a great, it's, it's going to be a painful time, but a great time. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to start doing this video series, which I've recorded in the past, but I'm updating it on notes versus, like notes versus rental property, notes versus private lending, notes versus stock market, notes, you know, because I think a lot of people, if, if they really looked at it, notes is pretty well positioned throughout the years now, but when there's bad news on the horizon, that is going to be more inventory for us on the note side. And I tell you, it's, I think I could make a strong argument against anybody comparing the note business as an investment in those kind of times versus anything else. In this time, there's a lot of people over the course of the last, what, 15 years that have taken back paper. And with all the layoffs and the store closings and all the other stuff, those people work somewhere. Yeah. And yeah. That, that just creates opportunity. Yeah, it really does. I, I've, I've mentioned – I don't know, I, I guess on my tip of the day, maybe I did it on an update Wednesday, but starting more and more to see those cracks getting getting bigger. And the reality of it is, I oh gosh, I had these stats in my tip of my tongue, but I, I, I may be off in these a little bit, everybody, so double check this. But I believe that um, Black Knight Financial with ICE, their stats said that 70%, 70 percent of the serious delinquent loans are all being held back because of forbearance plans, workouts, and BK-13. And what's going to eventually happen is at some point in time, because essentially the government buys all these, these notes, Fannie Mae, Jimmy Mae, Freddie Mac, and they're holding banks accountable more if those loans go bad. Now, so far, they've been telling the banks, hey, don't let these foreclosures show up as sales on the books. We don't want that. Uh, on uh, you know the public to see that, so you better you know work with these people and do forbearances, do whatever you have to do to keep them off the foreclosure books because the foreclosures are historic lows right now, 0.6 percent, which is artificial. There's there's no way that it's that low, and so they're forcing banks to do that because the penalty will be, hey banks, if you don't cooperate, if you don't get in line, guess what? We're going to put these notes back on you. Then we're going to have some some real problems. Well, here's an interesting thought. In January of 2007, Bernanke told Congress that Fannie Mae is okay with a 10% non-performance rate for, at that time. What happened nine months later? Yeah. 
and it'll hit the fan. Now, it's a portfolio that's 10 times larger. And in August of 24, today, the it has 13% in defaults. Yeah. That's a huge number. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is a game of cards. And, uh, you know, everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most consumers, when they get a loan, they just think the bank is from, the, the loan is from the bank. And the reality is it's from the bank for about 30 seconds. And then it's immediately sold to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and Ginnie Mae. And that's why we say the government, us, taxpayers, technically, we're the ones who own all this stuff. But the banks play that role of collecting the money and acting really as a servicing company. But Dodd-Frank is very clear that these banks are now held more accountable. Um, and if, if Fannie Mae decides, hey, we think this bank is setting people up for failure, we're going to kick it back on them. But, of course, again, that's where the problem starts to go. You could have a run on a bank where, you know, between the treasury bonds, you know, all the unrecognized losses on that, uh, which is a whole different story, but also with, with all of these potential loans now being the bank's responsibility and on their books, and then having the 10 times penalty come in, it'll be disastrous. So I think they'll continue to try to hold it back, but at some point in time, man, it just, it, it's, it's got to happen because you're right. Credit card debt not only on uh, is is at record highs again right now, but so is the delinquency on credit card debt, automobile debt, same thing. I'm looking at an article today that um, Florida's household debt increased to seventh in in the nation. Um, North Dakota's had a 27.8 percent increase in household debt between 2019 and 2020. So 20 years. Uh, Texas is in there at second place, 19 percent increase. Um, so debt to income ratios are going up nationwide, and and yeah, it, it's going to be unfortunate. But the, the the great thing about that that you were alluding to, but we'll bring up to now is we bailed everybody out the last time. We being the, the individual note investors, Wall Street couldn't do it, the government couldn't do it. So small investors had to come in and really work with people, and we were the ones that saved people from from losing their houses, and that's going to repeat itself. But the the other thing that we have not talked about is. The old, uh, I think it was Sports Illustrated Daily in New York. It, it was, it's on uh, uh, 50th, 50th, 50th Street in, in Midtown Manhattan. It's a 23 story structure. Do you know that sold at a 97.5% discount? Jesus. It, it, it also, uh, Zales was in there, so was MIP. So it's this is coming too in around Phoenix. You have all these little strip malls. They have vacant with Amazon. Oh. That's the thing about any of that. Yeah. That's a this too. And they use to employ people. Yeah. So there's a lot going on and there's there's and back in May. They were saying that 3,000 retail stores were going to close. That was in May. Now, here we are in August. Uh, I mean, you know, big lot. Uh, yeah, I just saw that. They're closing 300 stores or something. Yeah. Correct. And it just goes on and on. And Dale, I mean, and, or here, in Intel, in Chandler, just laid off 15,000 employees last Thursday. Hmm. Now, what happens when... Your severance pay runs out. Think about that one. Right. It means how many of these payers are two income payers and you lose one, you're kind of SOL after that. Yeah. So it, it's going to start cascading it. Not to be negative, but it is what it is. Yeah, and that will affect property values, obviously defaults, and that's where the financing comes in, everybody. And, and uh, again, if you're hemming and hawing about getting involved in this, in this business, now's the time to do it and learn because the inevitable is going to, to eventually happen to what degree still un uncertain because I'm sure there'll be some government stoppage of some kind or if they, they have no problem turning on the printing press, you know, yeah. but even, even that, I mean, good Lord, our, our national debt is just a staggering amount of money, but the inevitable happens and, and, there's a lot of money in the cleanup. There's a lot of money when you have solutions to the problem. And that's what our industry ultimately becomes. For the last five, six years, 
we've been focusing on performing those because that's been the bulk of the the inventory probably 80 20 uh, maybe 90 10 performing notes non-performing notes but starting to see that switch already starting to see some more non-performing notes hit the marketplace and i still think we're early on um, but it's 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 going to come and and there'll be some really really good investment opportunities for everybody and for those who you know want to be in something that's also socially conscious as an investment that's what this note business is all about where we take non-performing notes and get them re-performing again you know and and uh, that's going to be the the name of the game and that's really why you step back in right to the to the note business exactly. and also to this point kevin in 08, we dropped, what, 50 points, 50% mm -hmm. value? If yeah. we do business today, and your base your property values on today's values, you're making a huge mistake. You better allow for a 20, 30, 40% drop quickly because otherwise you're going to be sitting at, you're not going to have a chair. Yeah. And now, you know, it's equally important. to your point, we have definitely seen, and I don't recall seeing this before. Maybe I just, it wasn't on my radar screen. And maybe I wasn't associated with companies that do this, but there's a lot of lenders that do private loans for rehabbers, of course, right? And that's gotten more popular. People are doing private loan originations and such, and some small companies are just one off. And we're starting to see those short-term bridge loans default. And I'm convinced, I mean, I, I don't have real statistics to, to go into on that, but just logically, well, what's happened? Well, what's happened is the rehabbers are starting to rerun their number. They're starting to recalibrate and go, what could I sell the house for, number one? Number two, my my lumber and labor price is going higher and higher every single day, and they start recalibrating and going, I can't make any money on this. You know, Why am I gonna spend four months fixing this thing up to turn around and put it on the market for three months uh, while I'm just bleeding money and I'm not gonna make a profit, I'm just gonna, walk away from the loan and and have it the private lenders uh, uh have to take it over and man if you're a private lender and you're not watching your ratios and you're right if you're looking at after repaired value loans and stuff like that you could be in for a rude awakening because now you're into the deal too much you know what you do with the hard money lender you cross collateralize you tie that puppy up that collateral so if they leave it really hurts them yeah, I'm just wondering how many how many people know and how many people are in a position they just, you know, look, in good times, everybody's doing those private loans and, hey, I'm making 12, you know, you know how it gets, everybody's yield hunting, right? So, hey, I'm making 12%, I'm making 15%. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. until something, something happens. So, yeah, all those little numbers, you know, they're not isolated. When you start to put them all together, we've got a problem. The time to identify it is now and the time to understand what the solution is because once again you know there'll there'll be there'll be solutions and there'll be money to be made so you want to position yourself uh, properly you know so if you're in real estate uh something related you got to learn this side of the business you know if you're in notes but have just been focused your education on performing you better learn the non-performing side now i mean there's no question of that of course I can help you out with that. I do personal consulting. You guys can reach me at Kevin at KevinCortell.com and uh, just have a conversation. I'll book a, a, a phone call with you and we'll talk for 30 minutes and see if it's the, the right fit for you. Um, and I think for a lot of you who listen to this program, I think you'll find it that way. If you're in Phoenix, highly recommend that you attend um, Dave's meetup up there. Where is that again? I can't remember the name of the restaurant. I've never been there. but Washington Restaurant near the Conley southwest corner of Guadalupe and Dobson in Mesa. You got like a meetup account that they can find it on uh, their phones or they something? Can, or? Tom Capital site and just look on the Note Investors Forum. So TaxTonCapitalUSA.com Note Investors Forum. Okay. All right. So on your website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what's and the website again? I, I didn't. Capstone. Capstone. C A P S T O N E U S A. CapitalUSA.com. And then just go to the. Um, as a matter of fact, Christian Fortin just popped in. He, 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 he was think, he Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Oh, so, good. anyways, there's a site. There's a drop box there. You can, you can fill in your information, reserve your spot. Because I'm trying to cap it at 35 or 40 people. I want to keep it nice size. And then from that, we're going to take the folks that are there 
and break those down the period of small masterminds. So we have one major event every month, and we have series of masterminds because people didn't want to lay out their their dirty underwear, so to speak, in a meetup, but to a small group because our goal is to get people, help them, retweak their business and provide them to thrive. That's my goal. Yeah. And, and you're right. I, I was going to have one of the questions I had on my side here that I, I wanted to ask you, but you're kind of addressing it now. I've helped a local club here in Orlando, which is no longer around. And I think it's no longer around because how do you handle new people coming in and older people who've got some more experience? The new people you have to address and kind of get them up to speed. Otherwise, they're lost the whole time and they're not going to show up again. The old people are going to sit back and go, oh, my God, we got to go over, you know, a contract for deed again. <laughs> you know? So you've got that dynamic. And I kept telling them, I said, start the meeting for the new people a half hour earlier. So you can get them all up to speed and then, you know, you, you don't have the, you know, the, the people more experienced just sitting there, you know, right. waiting the whole time. So you you're decided to break them into groups and I'm sure you'll kind of section them out based upon experience. Well, but, but I feel I have to set the table because a lot of people don't believe what we're talking about, you and I right now. So I've got to show some numbers sure. and then a solution. But, but the title of the meetup, like the subtitle is Mindset Reset. You got to change your mind, your thinking. Mm -hmm. You got to find a solution to make money and to live yourself. Gotcha. That whole town. And I, I feel that there's a lot of people that are attending this meetup. They're a bunch of white haired like me. We've got a lot we can share and help people with. Yeah. And what do you think somebody, you know, with what I do, um, and I know you know, but for, for somebody who may not, I work with people of all different levels, right? I'll work with people who are brand new. In fact, I was really excited. I got um, brand new guys signed up with me August 31st, uh, Dave, and uh, his name is Aaron, and got him into a deal under contract by, uh, sorry, July 31st, he signed up under a contract in August 6th. You know, brand new. He's kind of been kicking around, look at some of the free education online, and finally just started to take the plunge and work with, work, right. work with me. And, you know, I've got all the time, you know, people who are new and getting uh, uh, going into business and everything. But ultimately, some people want to get into it and, and really make a, a run of it, make it a full-time business or replace their income and that sort of right. thing. And that's where what I mentioned earlier is at some point in time, you run out of your, your own capital. So what do you do? And I think these meetups, I think there's a lot of people who should start them but are probably afraid. Maybe they're lacking experience levels. Or what are your thoughts on that for somebody coming up? Do you think you have to have a lot of experience or you think you bring it all to the table? or? or Partner with people that have the experience, and the, the one with the less experience, be the boardman or gopher or you know, whatever you want to call it, learn and then break off. Yeah, but you could be an organizer. You might not have all the answers, but you could organize and coordinate everything and, and, and bring people in. And um, I think there should be a lot more of those meetups. I know the meetups were hot for a while. Of course, COVID kind of blew everything up. Um, but um, I think it's time for people to start to do that, too. So if you're new in the business or have experience in a business or very experienced, man, get a note meetup together because not only is it is it great to hear other experience, but inevitably you're going to be doing some business together, right? But, you know, Kevin, what I found, too, is before I put this out there, I called five or six trusted folks. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you want to hear? And number one, what I didn't say it directly, but the, the idea of just getting together face to face, eyeball to eyeball, none of this stuff here, and they want that, yeah. and they want to be to share where they are. They want they got they're embarrassed with their problems. They they want to get them worked out, and we're there to help them. Yeah. And, and then, but more specifically, it's not just oh call me. It's like okay, let's turn this around and let's make some money. And this, there's going to be serious money here. Tell me. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah. How much time um, and effort do you think? I mean, somebody might be looking at setting up a meetup and then just going, God, it takes so much of my time or, or you know, so much effort. W w is it worth it or not? What are your thoughts on that? I did this meetup for, what, five or six years before the COVID stuff. I did 50, 60 people a month. I was doing deals all the time. Partnering with folks, they want they want my brand. Yeah. So we we split the deal, they funded it, it was all good, and we, I, we just rolled. 
Yeah. So for me, it's fun. For them, it was fun. We had it was one note after all this was said and done of an outside party. You know the party, and that note went bad. What a year ago, I helped him work it out, and he gave he just tipped me quote unquote a thousand dollars to help me work through it. I didn't have to do it, but I did it. Yeah. That's the way. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Down in New York. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So anyway, I just feel that this is a phenomenal. Yeah, it's a negative. Look, I dumped this thing on, but it's a phenomenal opportunity to grow and to make money and reestablish your relationships. Because I've been so dormant, people thought I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like I mean, but then when you call them, so it's an, it's an excuse to call them and reestablish, and that's fun. Yeah. So you. And I think you're right on the face to face. I mean, I. I have to do a lot of stuff on on the social media, you know. Today, you just do in, in, in your business that I have on the education side. But right. man, I much prefer a live audience, and I, I uh, always have. And and going to networking events and things like that, they're just a heck of a lot of. Uh, it, it's more fun. It, it's more meaningful, and there's a difference, you know. Um, relationships are better made in person versus over video screens and and such. It's not quite. Not quite the same thing, and, and I think we yeah, I think we got to get back to that. You know? It's just not business. You develop some close friendships that way too. Yeah. And it plus, but when you can read somebody's eyes, you get a sense if you can trust them or not. Yeah. Their manner. You hear about what they're doing with other people. Yeah. So that trust. But I need to say this too. You need to everything you do. You need to paper the living daylights out. Right. Yeah. Always. Especially in this business, I mean, just remember, everybody. If in real estate, if it's not in writing, it's not real. It, it doesn't exist. Right. You know, you can handshake a deal with somebody all day long, and if all parties do what they're supposed to do, great, no problem. It's it's when things uh, when things don't. If it's not in writing, you got you have no agreement. So yeah, we we've got to. Hey, look, we're in the paper business, right? So let's paper things up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you've got to look at it. What is the worst thing that could happen here, and how can each of us be protected? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my thoughts. Yeah. Uh, it's just you have to do it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent, and um, and I there's going to be people doing more and more things together. I think too because the opportunities are. I, I don't know if it'll hit like it did in two thousand eight, nine, ten because there's more laws and rules and regulations in there now. Um, but even if it's half, it would be. It, be huge, you know, and and right. and um, you know, just so much, so much opportunity, and you know, I know that there's going to be bringing back. I was just looking at a deal the other day, um, and I, I've looked at so many notes. It's kind of funny. I'm working with a client, and I go saw a picture of it, and I said, "God, that property looks familiar." Let me check on my computer, and sure enough, I saw that property on a on a uh, on a tape like a year and a half ago, and I still have it on my computer, yeah. right? So I'm like, I remember this one. And uh, in the notes, it confirmed what they told us this time around when they were selling it. So the company who owned it didn't sell it back then uh, because it was in foreclosure and that sort of thing, didn't sell. But they had a note on there that says, working on uh, homeowner assistant fund with them. And right. sure enough, this time around, the tape that I just looked at last week, the company got uh, who owned this note got 50000 bucks from the homeowner assistant fund to catch that person up on the loan. They've been making payments now on time for four months. It's like, there you go. And that program is going to be back again. And of course that company's selling the note now. They just got 50 G's plus four payments. You know, they're, they're good. And uh, they basically took a note, everybody not performing, got it re-performing and now added value. Just like if you bought a house and you fix it up and you added yeah. value. Yeah. So I think there's going to be some great opportunities for that. Other opportunities are, Days on market is going to start decreasing for those those assets online. If you understand seller financing and you can help somebody structure a seller carry deal, you can make money. It's consulting. Yeah. That's it. So you can go to agents, you can go to other investors, other investors who did bad deals, get with them, do the workout. Hopefully you know more than them. That's a win. Mm -hmm. It's 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 just it's Develop, it's continuing to develop your brand. That's my perspective, anyway. Yeah, 
And there is power in, in the groups. Um, for example, even with, with, my, with my client base, you know, I, my client base is active enough where, and it has been now for years, that I can go to some of these bigger buyers and say, send it to us first. I've got educated people. We've got capital. I guide them through the deal. And we can take advantage of, of that group momentum versus you trying to go to that one company yourself. You're not going to be able to work out a deal. You're not big enough. You know? But if you have right. like, wow, he's bringing you know, 50, 60 good buyers to the table, then we can get better deals. We can get more deals. We can get first access you know, to inventory. But I imagine that's going to be a part of your meetup eventually. You get enough people going who are looking for deals. You know, heck yeah, let's let's uh, get together. Um, well, I, yeah, this is not my first word yet with the meetup, so I mean, I'm just going to revive it to do it better. Yeah, yeah, and I tried to. I was going to put together a live event out in uh, Reno. Uh, I was going to fly out early to do that event out there with uh, with Madison and try to put something together, but I thought about it too late in the game, and I just thought, oh, it's going to be rushed, and I just didn't know if that gave enough people enough time. But I'm still in the works on something like that, so I'll let you know if I'm. Heading out yeah, west, right. heading out west there, and and uh, you can meet me up there. Maybe I could pop down. Uh, work, up, up, yeah. yeah, work out the work out the time. So the other, I was thinking about doing a subgroup of people that like to hike, go out in the trail, and talk about people. Yeah, I mean, if, if it's not fun, why do why do it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's going to be an early morning group. <laughs> well, and, not in October, November. <laughs> So anyway, I, I just see a lot of possibilities here. Yeah. Uh, and we just have to stay above the foray, but be aware of what's going on below us. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, go Under, from there. Uh, yeah, understanding problems, bad news, but not letting that control you. Understanding it, identifying it, and going, okay, where's the silver lining? What, what's the solution here? And that's really the name of the game because – Neither you or I love reading about all that negative stuff, but it's like you have to understand what's what's coming, and and that's the only way to do it is to just really read these publications. And you and I look at a lot of the same publications and such and right. studies, and and I think it's important, um, you know, to to do that and understand what's what's coming down the line. And uh, when you're prepared, you know, again, but see the silver lining. I think it's going to be. Uh, well, one of the things, Kevin. The CDC is coming no matter what, central digital, digital currency. Okay. And I you put, remember the name Cloud Strike from about three weeks ago? Sure. So I was at an event where their, one of their top legal folks was there. And she said at that time it's a test run. So she said, look for before or after the election. My point is when you're looking at this assets, notes, and I mentioned buying at a discount. You don't know where the money is going to be, so you really got to build a cushion to allow for that change in valuation. So it's important to get straight ITV, LTV, or whatever. You really got to look at the whole composite. I'm not trying to get political, but it's a reality of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I hear you. So um, congrats on getting back in. I'm, I'm glad, to have, glad to have you back in the uh, – in the business market there and, and getting the club up and, and running again to meet up. And again, the website, everybody, capstonecapitalusa.com. And uh, you can check out the forum there as well. And, and uh, honestly, if you're, if you're there, like I say, he, he runs a great group, a good group of people. In, in the years past, I, I came out there and spoke to the group and found it uh, really well done. Um, so Kevin, I need to edify you too. You and I met what? Ten years ago or so, maybe years more. Ago. Yeah, but everything that I learned, I paid ninety percent of what I learned in the note business. I learned through you. Oh, I appreciate that. So if folks are looking at you to be their mentor, their consultant, I couldn't recommend a better person. Well, I've got to. And that's from the from old writer guy. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that uh, very much. I, I really do. So. Thanks, everybody, for uh, listening to the podcast. Again, sorry, it's been a while since I've done one. But, again, check out all the other content that I'm putting out there for you. In fact, I just did a – I put a nice little four-hour training. If you're still on the fence, little 49 – 49 bucks is all I'm asking for that um, uh, four-hour training course. I mean, so it's basically a, a giveaway, and uh, it's really good, really detailed. Uh, I call it uh, no fluff. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, so it's not going to be one of these skim in the surface kind of things. And you can check that out on social media as well and, and uh, get that if you're still on the fence. And I think that will absolutely change your mind about uh, where you're going to be investing in the future. So, Dave, thanks for being on, my friend. Thanks, Always good to talk with you. Yeah. Uh, good to see you again. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Take care.